first off, my reaction to Twist is Worst Pony Day. No! What gave you that idea? No, 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 no! 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 Okay, that's not the official Olympics theme, but um, it's something. So, uh, yeah, we push the games are here at last. Thank you. Yes! Of course, the Cuter Market students get to carry the flag and Rainbow Dash's aerial relay. Correct me if I'm wrong, team is there. And we get not one, but two surprises. Because of his heroic efforts to save the Empire, Spike has been asked to light the torch. Oh my. And Princess Twilight gets her own seats alongside the other special guests. And they include the Saddle Arabians from Season 3, Prince Bluebud, believe it or not, and two others I'm pretty sure I'm going to spawn fanfiction. Excellent. However, if it gets stage fright. And I'm hoping they're done with Mrs. Harsh Whitney. I'm not saying she's bad per se, it's just that... Is anyone of us getting tired of her constantly making appearances? Anyway, Twilight has Telcom out, and apparently Tessa says, power through the mind, instead of listening to Twilight trying to tell him that she did it. I think that comes later. But not too later, which of course sends the, uh, which of course spawns the misunderstanding, or something something or whatever that puts the character into depression and <clears throat> I gotta go back for it back for a bit because I missed a I missed an interesting point. There's gonna be some there's a lot of cameos in this one that I'm pretty sure are gonna spawn fan fiction. I'm just surprised I didn't notice them before. That's unbelievable. <laughs> so after Ponyville gets silver in the aerial relay, Spike tries to um make up for the torch embarrassments by singing the clown sale anthem, which of course he doesn't know. And that would lead to something something that's either funny or will leave you speechless. And I know you might be thinking, it's another difficulty other typical David Fulsey stunt. Um not quite. I d <laughs> what? Hear me now. Hear me out. We're not all the way through. So afterwards, Spike is under Spike is suppressed again. Packs up because he knows they have to go in the morning. And the game concludes with something called ice archery, which looks fascinating. 
Twilight Mage is a dragon mount in disguise of all things. Quick callback and how about this? Instead of a closing ceiling with spikes, it's a closing cloud with ice spikes. Oh my. With Pegasi unable to move the cloud and then security managing security having security not able to disable magic disabling. Guess who's gonna come to the rescue? Okay, so he leaves into action and does that, and I forgot to mention we see a Pegasi design of Wings for Twilight. Odd. All being commended, Spike feels on pride in himself. Huh. I thought he'd be over that. And where have we heard this lesson before? Where you can only fix the disappointment in yourself. Hmm. So point of it wins the win metal count by one. Spike gets only the closing ceremony fireworks successfully this time. Thank you! And that's it. And going back I realize and going back I realize I forgot something. The magic disabling. To avoid cheating. When has Rarity cheated? She'd never do that. Hello! Something's wrong. But aside from those small bits that could be worth some questioning. Um, David? You actually did another good one this time. I'm serious. I said it was pretty good. Spike managed to get a good piece of development, and despite not seeing the questioning games on completely, this was still a pretty good Spike one. So, final vote is 4 out of 5. I can sense all I have to say, so... See you next week when the season finale appears, and hopefully this Megan McCartney written one will not be like season two's. For me, at least.